As the COVID pandemic eases and the impact of Brexit begins to be felt, Scotland's supply chain is falling into crisis. A shortage of drivers means delays are now more common and the lack of labour across different sectors is putting a real strain on businesses. For them, this crisis is taking both a financial and emotional toll. To go through this phase, I think everybody's going to have to dig deep into their pockets and take a, take a knock. After lockdown, Dean was forced to shut one of his two restaurants in Edinburgh. He had too many vacancies to fill. The staff that were on furlough didn't come back. And we thought, all right, OK, maybe two or three weeks and then we'll get more staff or people that were working for us before would come back. No, we couldn't sustain paying all the overheads and hoping that things will get better. And so we had to dispose of it, unfortunately. And, you know, it broke, broke our heart. How is your staffing situation now? All the staff from Morningside came here and we, we still don't have enough for this one. The biggest problem that we have at the moment is finding kitchen porters. We're hoping that things will get better, hoping, but I, I don't see it getting better for another few months yet. 80% of our staff here were Europeans. Half of them left and didn't come back. Uh, so we're trying to get more local staff, but it's very, very difficult. With staff in such high demand, convincing people to choose Dean's workplace means paying higher salaries. The competition has been, you know, throwing money right, left and centre. We can't pay any more that we are paying and um, it's not enough. What's your experience of the supply chain? One word, very, very, very disrupted. You're here this morning, it's 10 o'clock, we didn't really get a supply yet. We're open at 12 o'clock for lunch and everything is fresh. So what we are doing now is buying two or three days in advance and hope that we'll have enough for tomorrow. So what do you think needs to be done about this? Do you think there needs to be some kind of intervention? Yeah, definitely. The very first thing that I'm worried about is the next increase in VAT, the business rates coming out, you know, coming pretty soon, energy prices that are going through the roof. So, you know, for us to, to, to survive all of this, we're going to need some help throughout the, the transition because if casualties start happening and if it starts tumbling, it's a domino effect. As we leave Maison Bleu, people start gathering for lunch and the fresh produce arrives just in time. For fruit and veg suppliers like Sarah, timing is everything. It's a fast turnaround from field to fork, so recent driver shortages are adding extra pressure. The delivery is late by a day or two, then you've got a day or two less to sell the produce. Um, so it doesn't have that long a shelf life, so it's causing a little bit of uh, trouble. The waste has dramatically increased. It's upsetting as well to see all that fresh produce go to waste. As well as selling direct from her shop, Sarah also supplies restaurants and does home deliveries. She relies on a wholesale market to source the goods. Suppliers at the market, they can't get the, the produce in to sell. Sometimes by the time it does come in, it's no good to sell. So then that's, you know, who takes a hit on that? Um, so yeah, a bit frustrating. And that frustration is not isolated to the food sector. With Christmas fast approaching, retailers are worried they won't be able to meet demand. Certain products we might just not have. And, you know, people, I mean, people have to think, well, you know, if, if I can't get that particular, you know, doll, then maybe I can buy something else instead. And I think people may have to be more flexible uh, as to what they want. Shortages at Christmas time uh, happen all the time anyway. Uh, it, it's just that this year will be worse. We're hearing a lot about your shops being affected by delays in, in goods arriving. How have you been affected by that? Some products, you know, no problems whatsoever. It's been as it always has been. However, other products, uh, especially those coming from Far East, um, we have noticed there's been delays and, and often shortages as things get held up in ports or there's problems getting containers. In addition to that, there's been substantial price increases on products that are quite bulky and therefore more expensive to ship. Have you had to adapt much? There's a French company um, that the lead times are now one month so you basically you don't know you know you can only order one month ahead which means you have to keep stock levels much higher than you would otherwise do to allow for that and order much more often but of course more orders mean more deliveries and real lorries are in shorter supply than toy ones the single biggest challenge for the retail industry right now is the lack of hgv drivers 
that's clogging up the arteries that supply shops. That's the biggest challenge, but we're also hearing huge problems right across our supply chain. Producers, manufacturers, everybody's really struggling with, with, with a real labour challenge right now. We've heard a lot about rising costs of distribution, for example, but when are these rising costs going to hit customers in the pocket? Prices were actually slightly falling. They're now just starting to go up. Below inflation at the moment, but how long that's going to last, we can't tell. The other big concern for retailers, of course, is our customers are getting hit with energy price rises. There's some big tax things coming in in the next few months. So it's not just that our costs might go up a little bit. Actually, customers might have less money to spend as well. It's, a, it's almost a perfect storm for a pretty battered industry. With everyone we've spoken to, there's a recurring theme. There are not enough drivers on Scotland's roads. The majority of our orders have been on the back of a trailer. But now in this yard, some trucks are sitting empty, simply because there's no one to drive them. It's tough. Every day is a challenge. We have a lot of demand in our business. Goods in this warehouse have come from all over the world. Bullet Express delivers them on behalf of more than 500 companies. It's a huge logistical operation. The firm normally has 75 drivers, but it's been struggling to get up to the full complement. Every day we have some sort of shortage and we backfill that with agency. But of course everybody's using agency, so they're now becoming leveraged. So it's, uh, it's very tough at the moment. How are you trying to recruit drivers then to make it more attractive? So we try to induct our drivers ourselves. Uh, we have increased drivers' pay, double-digit percentage. We've increased the benefits for drivers to come and join us. We've put retention bonuses in. There are many things that we, and measures we're taking to try and retain our drivers. And we've heard a lot about the short-term visas which are on offer just up until Christmas. What are your views on those? I think it barely scratches the surface. There's an estimated shortage of 90,000 drivers in the UK. This isn't a new problem, but one that's been exacerbated by COVID and Brexit. 14,000 EU drivers left the UK in the year to June 2020, and only 600 had returned by this year. The UK government hopes to recruit up to 5,000 drivers through a new temporary visa scheme, which launched this week. We asked the Home Office how many applications they've received so far. They said they couldn't tell us. Haulage and transport and logistics and the supply chain are absolutely vital to, to keep the economy going. And if these trucks stop, literally everything does stop. A lot of lorry drivers have decided to surrender their licence. They've decided to call it a day. It's also meant that there's been huge delays in testing for HGVs, um, with DBSA shutting down essentially for nine months. So it's caused this huge backlog. And not only that, but we have also had the issue of Eastern Europeans going back to either their home country or to other European countries. Despite the high salaries on offer just now, hauliers think that conditions need to improve to solve the shortage in the longer term. There is work that needs to be done, particularly in terms of welfare facilities. You know, this is a very sedentary job where there's not a lot of options for healthy food. Um, they have to think about parking in terms of security for the load, for fuel and for the driver. And, you know, th there is a real lack of decent welfare facilities for drivers. Of course, the supply chain starts here on the farm, but farmers are far from immune from the staffing shortages seen elsewhere, and pig farmers are particularly hard hit. Robin runs this pig farm just outside Edinburgh. He says this is one of the toughest times in years. We've relied quite heavily on butchers, perhaps from uh, Eastern Europe, and it's perhaps been, been, been an ageing workforce as well. And because of circumstance with COVID, well, people going back home, all of a sudden there's less butchers in the processing halls in the slaughterhouses. Instead of booking 100, 200 or 300 pigs and uh, leaving the farm, the slaughterhouse perhaps could only take half that amount. They just keep growing and pigs just eat. That's what they do. So they're consuming, each pig can consume three kilos a day of uh, pig feed. So it costs up to about five million pounds, we reckon, in the last few weeks. Five million pounds? across Scotland. It's cost a huge amount of money. Just excess feeding and pigs going out of spec. They don't fit in the supermarket trays that they're designed for. 
And so therefore, when they send the pigs to, to, to market, they get penalised heavily. Last year, Robin was earning up to £1.60 per kilo for the best pigs. Now, with many of his pigs overweight, he gets just 70 pence. We're hearing a lot about the prospect of pig culling down south over the border. What about here in Scotland? We talk about you know, saving carbon and recycling this and recycling that to put good food when people are going hungry into landfill is just something we just don't want to do. Culling's the last thing we want. We're lucky in Scotland just now we've managed to stabilise the, the backlog. Some people might think of a shortage of butchers as you know the butchers they see on the high street, but it's actually those in abattoirs, slaughterhouses, behind the scenes. What do you think needs to be done to to fill that shortage of staff? It's a very uh, skilled job, the butcher's job. You can't just bring somebody in and train them overnight. They were offering to pay more, but there was no extra butchers to hire. The government were talking about a three-month visa. Uh, we're actually pushing for a 12-month visa. 12 months the minimum. Nobody's going to come here for three months. We need to get them here for a long time. Obviously, Christmas is around the corner now. What are your thoughts on, on how the market could look around then? Pigs and blankets, for example, that's a highly... Uh, it's very, it's a very in labour intense. I mean, you've got chipolasa sausages hand rolled with bacon. They're going to be very expensive if you can get them at all. It's not just pigs and blankets. Businesses are warning of shortages across the board, and with their costs getting higher and higher, the question remains: How long will it take for customers to feel the impact of this crisis at the tills?